Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is your first time watching. My name is Matt, and this here is my 1950 Cat D4 project that is in many, many pieces right now, but it's slowly coming back together. So in last video, I um, got half of that steering clutch rebuilt, and throughout this video, kind of off camera, I'm gonna be finishing this build here. I got this side already stripped down. But if you wanna see how that was done, just watch the previous video. It's not really worth showing again. So on this video, I'm hoping to get these hubs pulled out right here and the seals replaced. I'm a little bit worried I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna find some kind of horrible sign that something terrible is going on inside the final drives, but I guess I'll just uh, say a prayer about that and, and hope that goes well. I got a lot of questions on the previous video about how the steering clutches actually work. So let me just show that really quickly. It's, it's, it's not, too, uh, not too bad when you see all the parts together. Okay, so this, this hub right here is obviously connected to the final drive. And this here is the outer drum of the steering clutch, which bolts to this thing. So what you have to remember is if this drum moves, the tracks are gonna move. Okay, inside of the outer drum is the inner drum, which is two pieces like this, which has two pressure plates and all the discs and clutch packs or clutch discs are inside of here. And the first thing you'll notice on here is that there's notch is cut in for the splines of the bevel shaft and this is so once this is pressed on this part is completely fixed it cannot move on the bevel shaft if you press it on with the correct amount of force this other part here does not have those cut in and that's because this gets pulled out by this throw out collar over here which goes onto these threads and then your your linkage pulls it out these two are held together by the springs so you have a stud that goes through here, and then the spring goes on and it's held on by a retainer. So this way, these springs keep it compressed in its default state. There's two different clutch discs here. So this is the steel disc, which you'll notice is geared on the inside. That's way it's locked in on this inner hub, right? Then you have the other kind of disc, which is free on the inside, but it's geared on the outside. So it can rotate freely on this hub, but it's locked in onto this outer hub. So that's what the point of these teeth are. And this might not seem like a lot, but there's 12 of these, and there's about, I don't know, 100, maybe more teeth on here. When you add that up, it's very, very, very strong. Now that the nerd stuff's out of the way, we can get to pulling these. I was kind of reading through the book here on how to do this, and this is actually a very similar setup where this nut's the same size as the steering clutch nut, this shaft is the same size. And when you pull it, you actually do like some all thread, exact same setup pretty much as I used to pull that. So that should be fine. And then actually to press it on is exactly the same setup as I used on the uh, bevel shaft. The, the only thing that's concerning me is the phrase here that says, uh, considerable effort may be required at first when the bearing cage is pulled out of the bore, which basically means it's gonna be really, really hard to get these out. I don't want to hammer on them. There is like a bearing in here. So if I'm reading it right, you got to remove this screw and that opens up a hole here. And then you can rotate, you have to move the tracks obviously to rotate this thing. And there's several bolts behind this plate that you got to undo. Well, that came off really easily. I got some uh, defective Harbor Freight gloves, by the way, so. This is the first one I found in the box that actually had most of the fingers intact. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side at the same time since I'm gonna have to rope, rope, move the tracks. There's actually a gasket on the back of this thing. I don't understand the reason for that since uh, it's just on the back of this plate. There's one on here too. Okay, with that first one off there, on this side you can see that there's a, a screw or a screw in there. So that's basically what I have to do is slowly rotate the tracks and then remove each cap screw as I get to it. I guess I don't have to worry about it being in gear. It looks like there's six bolts in each side, so just gotta go slow and make sure I don't miss any. Okay, all the screws are out. I guess it's time for considerable force here. That's what the...
I think it's moving. Oh man, this gear does not look bad. If you watched that video where I drained all the fluids out of this thing, you'll know that the final drive fluid was like the only part that looked really good. And I'm really happy here. These gear teeth look pretty good. There's a, you know, just a tiny bit of marks right here, just probably from them sitting for years and years. But they, they're, they're just in great condition. This is the inner race of a bearing. There's no pitting on here. This looks really good. Just, you're gonna have to take my word for it now that I got grease all over it. I'll have to take a look at this bearing in here. There's like a hand etch mark on here. I don't know if you can see that. I can't quite read what that says, but it's a hand, some kind of hand engraving on there, on that bearing. But anyway, we'll get this, uh, I'll keep this, obviously I wanna keep it separated, so this is uh, passenger side, and then I'll get the driver's side out here. And then uh, we'll take them apart. Oh yeah, we gotta look in here. Let me get a better light for this, hold on. So that gear, just looks really, really good. Look at that on the top of those teeth right there. That's oil, I mean, it's been rotated, but that's like oil on there. Those teeth look great. And then that bearing also looks great. I don't have to mess with that. So the thing that threw me off in the manual was when it said considerable force may be required. Anytime I've seen that in like a manual for a car or whatever, it's always like an apology. Like we know it's really hard to do this, but somehow you, uh, you gotta find a way to do it. But this is not bad at all. Well, you were here for it. You watched me jinx myself. We got problems. That thing has chewed itself up for what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six teeth. So I'm going to have to rotate this gear and see what that is but it looks like something like a piece of metal got in there between the teeth and it just chewed that tooth right up so that would be on the inside and oh i see a little mark right there so let me rotate let me uh let me pull the dozer back a little bit and i'll mark that first tooth and then i'll do a full rotation to see if the gear on there is okay this, this probably isn't the end of the world. I mean, I could probably, I'm sure I can get another one of these. Of course, it's gonna be a way bigger bummer if that gear's bad, because that gear looks expensive. Okay, I got the tooth on the top there marked with a little frowny face. The, the damage should be on this side, on, on the inside side. To the, the little frowny face there. I'm gonna have to watch this footage back. I, I think I caught all the gears. I was also checking on the other side too, obviously. Those all look great. These just had these little, this is probably the worst one right here actually, where there's a little mark right on the top. Let me get you in there. All right, I gotta get this thing, <laughs> gotta get this thing back in now. This thing rolled pretty far. I'm wondering if I even went over twice, but I'll have to review that footage. Assuming when I review that footage that everything was okay, I mean, just spot checking it looked okay, there's still two really big concerns. The first is that there's something in that final drive that actually did this, right? That thing got picked up and ran through that gear and broke it. So I gotta find a way to get that out. And then obviously the second concern is, what is that piece? I mean, that piece is probably something that broke off of something. I'm not really sure what to do. Right now my instinct tells me to try to flush that final drive case and get whatever it is out of there. And once I have it out, then maybe I can determine what it is. But uh, I don't know. I was hoping not to have to remove the tracks or the final drive or any of that stuff right now. That'd be like a future project. But uh, I guess we'll just, we'll see where it takes us. All right. So this, this bolt, I think, is just here for running all thread through right here. This thing is about a tenth of an inch wider between these two all threads. So this, 
press actually fits in here properly this time, which is nice. Actually, I think this is a better idea. Yeah, there we go. Okay, this will be a quick one. So I think uh, one dog treat should do. Yeah, lay down. All right, we got a good 30 seconds to get this done. Here we go. It should pop right off, I would think. Yeah, we're getting kind of high up there. That was about 3,500 PSI. That's pretty, that's significant. Well, since I'm all set up, I'm gonna pop the other hub off too. Dog's still eating a toy, or eating a chew. That was 23,000 PSI right there. This one doesn't seem as mushroomed as before. So I might not need to re-thread that one. So here's, this seal actually looks really good. So a lot of degreasing there. I think this is a gasket on there. It kind of just fell apart. The rest of it's on here. This bearing looks good. I wasn't really planning on replacing that. This is a thrower, oil. Uh, so bearing looks good. I'll look at it a little bit closer in a little bit. This thing looks like it's bent. Or maybe it's supposed to be like that. No, look at this. So I'm just trying to figure out what happened here. It's probably related to the gear, but if you look at this thing, it's worn or it's smashed right here. Uh, right, this ridge right here is not supposed to be there. Like this side is normal. This one has that same gasket thing right there. Oh, where's the retainer or that flinger? Okay, so look on this one. It's like pressed onto here. Is it loose? And that other one, it was loose. So I wonder if that's the issue if it came loose. This one, these bearing, these races look okay. So it looks like this came loose off of here and it was spinning in there. So, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to bet that metal came off of here and maybe that's what tore the gear up. Okay, so let's talk about this broken gear. Um, like I said, I did get a new one. It's, it's probably in my mailbox right now. It was $170 for a new one. I wasn't really worried about replacing the gear. I'm more worried about why it's broken. So there's really two reasons a, a gear like this would be broken, I think. And the first is obviously something getting in there and chewing it up. But the second is that other big gear, if that thing's not aligned right, you might get a little bit of misalignment here. I guess it would be like that. This is way exaggerated and it would chew itself up. But since it's just, what's these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of, and then there's like a, look at that. You can see that there's a, something got embedded in there. So to me, this looks like a piece of metal got in here. So anytime you got a, a piece of metal in a gearbox, you gotta wonder, uh, you know, where did it come from and where did it go? And now I got that Cotton Eye Joe song stuck in my head for the next two weeks. We're definitely gonna have to flush this case out. Um, it, I think it was, I haven't looked up the specs, but it's at least 90 weight gear oil. It's probably more. And uh, you know, in the winter time especially, this is, uh, it, it'll, it'll just pick up pieces. It'll just pick it right up like it's peanut butter and run it through those gears again. So fortunately, this case right here, this is a cover that can come off. Uh, so we can get a really good look in there. Hopefully the, the pieces of the gear teeth that broke off are in there and maybe more. Or maybe it's already been uh, flushed out before. But either way, I'm gonna take this off now and uh, take a look inside, see what we got.
There we go. Jeez. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Not a lot of space in there to look around. I am seeing some flakes in the light right here. So there's definitely metal particles in there, but you'd expect that either way. I would have expected to see the, like, the teeth that had broken off to come out, but either those got ground up too, or someone has changed the oil and those came out. I mean, this thing is 70 years old, so that, could have, that failure could have happened at any time. And obviously the final drive oil has been changed before because that oil was in pretty good shape. Good news is these are the right size uh, seals here. So at least I got that going for me. All right, I got the new shaft in. I've been kind of talking to a couple guys that are really familiar with the tractor to get some, some perspective on this. I'm a, I'm a little bit worried about putting this all back together and having a break again. So going off of the flinger coming off, there's really two things that could have happened. Um, the first is there's two bearings. There's one here, obviously, and one here on either side of this gear. And if these bearings start to go out, this, this thing is going to jiggle a little bit and it could have worked that flinger off. So I looked at, this is one of the bearings right here. I looked at this one really well. It's, it's exactly like the other one. There's not anything that's off. The rollers all look really good. The, the other bearing is inside of the uh, final drive case. And I'll throw some pictures up. Um, I, I zoomed in close with my phone. And I did see uh, met, like kind of metal pieces on the other side of the rollers. And that's just, it's collecting it after whatever happened to the gear happened and pieces got kind of stuck in there. But the bearing itself looked really good. It was really, though the balls were all smooth, it rolled fine. Um, when I put the end of this shaft in, it, it, there's no jiggling. So I think the bearings are okay. So the other thing that could have happened, and uh, let me kind of place this together here. Okay, so you have the hub here, and this is the outer bearing cap with the seal that goes over. Then the flinger goes on, like so. This one doesn't stay on, but usually you have to kind of tap it on. And then the other bearing half goes on. So I think what's going to happen though, if this shaft isn't pressed into the hub far enough, goes in on the other side. So you have the, uh, the nut on the other side, and if this isn't pressed on far enough, it's possible that this is going to walk, like kind of, this drum is going to kind of shake a little bit and it could pop that flinger right off. I'm hoping that's what happened. I guess I might never know unless it breaks again, of course. So I kind of have a three, a three pronged way to uh, address this and I'll, the first is I'm going to put some bearing retainer on both of these, even though the other one wasn't loose, I'm going to put it on here after I kind of repair this a little bit. That way this will not pop off. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flush this entire case with diesel really well, get all that grain out of there. So there shouldn't be any more metal particles. And then the third thing I'm gonna do, this is the, uh, this is the inside of the, that bottom case I took off earlier. I'm gonna weld a, uh, a magnet just like this one on the inside. That way I can check it occasionally, track it, make sure we're not grinding anything, no bearings are going out. And I'll obviously do that on both sides too. If I ever do get into this final drive case, I'll just definitely replace that bearing and I'll double check that everything on that lower gear is okay. But there's really no other evidence that suggests the lower gear is messed up. So that's what I'm going with for now. Just pop the, bear, the uh, seal out of the other side. Look at that rust. These things weren't leaking though, but uh, I'll have to scrape that clean. In there. Nice tight seal on there. Okay, I got the sharp edge off of here, all the loose metal. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then I'm gonna get this, uh, I'm gonna use uh, the same stuff, the 680 retaining compound, and uh, it should hold fast. I'm gonna do both of them at the same time because I can't, once they're on here, it's gonna take a day to dry. Other steering clutches fully rebuilt and uh, ready to go. I was replacing the seal. This is the thing that holds the cup for the bearing. And I was just tapping that seal out and this just exploded. I was not hitting it hard. So I think it was 
kind of damaged. So I did get another one of these. I think this was 90 bucks. All right, get to work on this uh, drain plug here. I got both drain plugs and I got the transmission plug. I've already verified on these three that I have enough space on the inside that they're not gonna hit anything. I've used these magnets before, the rare, rare earth magnets. I like them because they're uh, countersunk on one side. So you don't have to get this weld perfectly flat and it'll, it'll sit pretty flush on here. I always like to be able to remove magnets from drain plugs because you can usually uh, get a better look at what's stuck to them. All right, so here's the cover here. So this is pipe thread, so it's not gonna go in all the way. I have kind of cleaned the threads off though. So it goes into maybe another turn there. You'll see it's fairly flush. All right, I also created one for the, uh, this is the main transmission drain. Uh, so I, there's plenty of space here in between that uh, takeoff. So I put four magnets in, should be plenty. I'll make sure it fits here. All right, that's like gonna be a black hole for metal. Any metal that gets even close to that thing is gonna get sucked up. I'm ready now to do the diesel flush. The first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna spray some brake cleaner back behind here and get all that, uh, that, those metal particles shot out of there. I'll degrease it and then I'll blow it out with some comp compressed air. And then I can hit it with uh, the diesel. I've already cleaned this flange off and it's kind of dark down here, but I cleaned that flange off too, since that's just gonna make more junk fall back into the gear set. Something's leaking on me. Leak fixed. I don't need to go too crazy here. I just need to get, it's, I mean, it's a small case, so I don't need to go nuts. Just anything that might be stuck to the outside. We're on this bearing in here. There's the, the main bearings right down here. And then uh, once I get the top, I'm gonna go and get the, uh, get the bottom of the case. Okay, I gotta wipe all this up now. It's a big mess on the inside. Down here, it's still draining. I got a lot out from the inside of that case though. So it's probably time well spent. I think I saw a few chunks come in there. So there is quite a cavity below the lip there. You see that, that fluid in there? So. It's, uh, there's, that's actually where all the nasty stuff's probably gonna hide all the metal flakes. Cause there's about maybe a half, three quarters of an inch of uh, area down there where stuff can get hidden. Pretty gross, but I'm getting a, uh, just getting a shop rag in there, pushing it in with a screwdriver and soaking it up as much as I can. I almost forgot, this is the, uh, the Christmas episode. So let's see if Santa brought us anything in here. So there, there's some flakes on the bottom. The stuff that's not moving is on the under, underneath. And yes, I know my diesel's the wrong color, so get it out of your system now. I see a lot of flex in there, but most of that's probably gasket material that I scraped off. It is definitely dirty though. There's a gasket that goes between these two flanges, like that. And then there's another gasket that this is the mating surface for the inside of the case. The one on both of these assemblies, this gasket that goes in here is in good shape. I'm going to reuse it. I'm against cutting up a new gasket and I'll show you. This thing is like paper thin and the depth of this sets, sits where this uh, bearing sits on its inner race. So if I did a thick, if I cut out a thick gasket, it's going to sit in a different spot on that race, which I'm not a fan of. This gasket right here, both of these got torn up. I mean, this is one of them. This one's the best one that I saved. Same, same deal there. That sets the, uh, the spacing of this bearing race to the, that inside bearing. So on this one, I'm going to use RTV because RTV sets pretty thin. Now, Cat wants you to put this whole thing together with the pinion shaft and everything as one piece and put it in there. You have to uh, draw this into the case. 
this is the part that's going to be in kind of somewhat interference fit and they want you to use the bolts to draw it in well that sounds pretty rough because you're going to have to do the bolts through this this uh, flange right here which means you're going to be rolling the the tractor back and forth to get it in there so i'm going to attempt to install this thing in pieces and uh, i think this should work as long as my puller fits so i'm going to install the shaft first here's a shaft up here then i'm going to install this part and then i'll put this on after um, and then i should be able to run all the bolts in uh, and torque them at the same time since it should be bottomed out so i should only have to rotate the tractor for one revolution of this, which is about, I, I want to say it's about eight inches of, of movement. This stuff is like, has the consistency of honey, but it does stick around for a long time. That race covered. Yeah, and this is kind of what I was figuring is getting this inner race pushed in is going to be difficult, especially with that whole assembly. That's why they want you to draw it in. I think this is going to be a lot easier if, I, if it works. Okay, I got this bearing pre-looped. I got the RTV on. It's kind of tight space here to show this to you. This thing, obviously this hole needs to go on the bottom. So, I, at least I would assume. Okay, got both shafts in. I'm doing both at the same time because I only want to roll the tractor once, so... One thing I didn't account for is these bolt holes have to be obviously lined up, but this, the, the spline on here has to be lined up. So I might need to move it a tiny bit to get this thing initially lined up on here. All right, guys, I just realized how big of an idiot I am. You don't have to line it up at all. You just have to turn this and, and line this up with those bolt holes. It doesn't matter which spline it's on. For some reason, I don't, I don't know. I guess it's late in the day and I wasn't thinking. The only thing you got to watch out for is this little hole here needs to line up with the notch on the bottom over there. But besides that, it's just, it's really simple. I'm not going to torque the first bolt down. I just need to wait till I get a second bolt in so it's perfectly lined up before I start torquing it. Internet tells me uh, 37 foot pounds for grade eight, three eighths, fine. Can you imagine doing this like 20 times to draw it in with a bolt? Ain't got time for that. So I went all the way back through and then I retorqued that first one I set in and then I torqued the one after that just to make sure it hadn't, it was still torqued and it was. So I'm pretty confident that all that's torqued in right. So now I just need to uh, press these on. Hopefully my press fits in there. I probably should have checked that before I did this. So it's the same exact setup as the uh, steering clutches. In fact, since I'm getting all this pulled out right now, I will uh, do the other steering clutch when this is over. So stick around for that. Now the manual says 15 tons. So this is a 30 ton press, which means my 10,000 PSI gauge goes up to 5,000 PSI. Some people don't quite understand uh, how that works yet, but that's okay. Well, since this is inside the tractor, I don't need to guard Charlie. She's uh, busy chewing on a bone anyways. So we're, what are we at right now? 2000 PSI. Please don't explode, please don't explode. 4,000. 5,000, all right. All right, other side. 4,000, 5,000, and now for the other steering clutch, which I've been working on in the background. It's all ready to go. We're going for 4,000 PSI, and there it is, 4,000 and holding. One last thing on these. So this right here goes over to cover this hole and then one of the bolts goes in right there. Does anybody know why there's supposed to be a gasket around here? I cannot figure it out. I mean, the steering clutch hub goes up against here. It is not, uh, I mean, it's not like sealed. 
So if you had fluid getting in, I, I just don't understand why you would need a gasket here. I'm, I'll, I'll put some RTV in when I put it back on. I just do not understand the reasoning for uh, the gasket. One other thing I do is I need an RTV in here. Originally there was a seal and both of mine completely crumbled apart. Uh, so I'll RTV that up before I put that nut back on. Anyway, that's it for that. Next week, I think it's gonna be putting the steering clutches back in, which is kind of a big, a big deal. The one last thing I gotta do here is I have to finish rebuilding the other brake band, which is kind of a really time consuming process. But man, this thing looks pretty cool, huh? Well, that's all the dangerous stuff out of the way, I think, and uh, things are looking pretty good. Next video, like I said, we're going to be doing the bevel shaft and, and steering clutch assembly reinstall, hopefully. And it's going to take a while to get that in there right, get the uh, backlash set on the gear, the ring and pinion. I haven't done that for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And uh, it's kind of higher stakes, I would say, at this point, because those gears kind of look expensive, probably harder to replace. And you want to get that right. You don't want it to chew itself up. So I'm going to take my time on that. And uh, after that, yeah, it's just a lot of reassembly. Pretty exciting. So, uh, yeah, with all that said, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a great Christmas, and I'll be back probably next year in uh, 2022 if we all survive that long.